Hey, my name is Ray, and you're watching Raya Books, and welcome to the 36th installment of my currently checked out series. If you're new to my channel and never seen any of my currently checked out videos before, essentially the purpose of this series is to share with y'all the resources that I utilize for my local public library system. I live in San Francisco, so the San Francisco public library system is the library system I use the most often. However, on increasingly rare occasions, I also use other library systems throughout the state of California. At the end of each video, I'll be giving y'all a price tally on how much money I saved by utilizing the resources available to me through my local public libraries. Now, if my math is right, I've officially caught up in terms of my currently checked out videos, which is such a lovely feeling for me, which means I do have two other-ish videos planned. I'm not going to say them because I don't want to give myself undue pressure. However, eventually there will be a video that is not a currently checked out coming out, hopefully sooner rather than later. And everything in this video was checked out between May 7th and May 21st. So I have a ton of nonfiction checked out this week and the first of which is a memoir. It is Biting the Hand Growing Up Asian in Black and White America by Julia Lee. This is about Julia Lee's experience growing up Korean American in LA during the time of the race riots and the death of Letitia Harlins. These events left her questioning her racial identity and it's not until she's in college earning her PhD that she comes to a kind of reckoning and an understanding of privilege and what that means for her and how it has shaped her ongoing identity. I checked this one out because I was browsing the Lucky Day collection at work and this cover just looked incredibly interesting. The synopsis sounded really good and living in San Francisco I tend to forget that other parts of the country are far more black and white than how in San Francisco it feels a little more white and Asian. So I'm interested to read that perspective. I know LA is in California and it's pretty much right down the street, but I thought this would be an interesting and a healthy perspective of for me to read from. And the second book that I have checked out is Angel Makers, Arsenic, A Midwife, and Modern History's Most Astonishing Murder Ring by Patty McCracken. This is a true crime book that centers on a series of murders in rural Hungary between 1914 and 1929. The town's midwife or the village's midwife, referred to as Auntie Susie, has been giving women arsenic in order to resolve unwanted children, injured family members, and just a whole bunch of shit. And then she gets caught she gets caught via anonymous letter and this book follows that whole journey from the beginning to the trials. I checked this out because I absolutely love true crime, a very unhealthy obsession I believe, but this one just sounded insanely good. I wish I could remember how exactly I came across it. I want to say it was mentioned in a comment, but I'm not 100% sure. However, I am I want to say probably halfway through considering there must be like a bibliography and notes and this is this is intensely interesting. I am loving it so far and I am really 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 looking forward to finishing it. The third book that I have checked out is Black People Breathe A Mindfulness Guide to Racial Healing by Z. Clark. This is a practical guide that features 33 mindfulness exercises centered on healing within the black community and also dealing with the systemic traumas that other BIPOC individuals experience. I checked this one out because I am really in my self-help slash healing era and if I'm going to be honest I actually already bought this one. Um, here, here's my copy. It looks exactly the same but I am incredibly excited to dive into this one. I've looked through it several times. The first flip through at the desk when before I checked it out I was like oh I'm gonna buy this and then there was um 
this little poem in the like in the middle called I walked alone and something about it just made me say oh I'm gonna I'm just gonna buy this one so I bought it I already own it I'm really excited to get through it I am loving that at this junction in time there are more and more books written by black women that focus on healing and it's just a beautiful thing like I am so excited to be able to add all of these things to my own chill the f out and relax toolkit and the fourth book that I currently have checked out is Water, Wood, and Wild Things Learning Craft and Cultivation in a Japanese Mountain Town by Hannah Kish Kirshner. Kirshner? Uh, I tried. This is a bit of a travel book where Hannah is invited to apprentice at a sake bar in the mountains in Japan in a small village called Yamanaka. While she's at this small village and working at this bar, she meets all of the people of the community who are woodworkers and farmers and artisans and just absolutely sounding amazing individuals. She ends up devoting a huge chunk of her time there to learning and understanding both the people and the crafts that they pursue. One of my best friends is actually in Japan right now and seeing all of her Instagram stories just made me want to read something that was centered in Japan. So when I came across this book in the library catalog, I kind of went, oop, I'll read that one. And I am pretty excited to read it. It sounds like a really, really interesting story and one of those things that I almost wish would happen for me, but I cannot leave my whole ass family. But maybe one day I'll get invited to go apprentice in a small book binder in rural America. Not racist rural America, just general ruler, like, like nice woodsy America. A girl can dream. The fifth book that I've checked out and the last nonfiction thing is this giant monster of a book, um, The Joy of Home by Ashley Gilbraith. I'm sorry y'all for the glare but there's there's no other way for me to balance the light here so excuse the glare off the beautiful books mylar. This is an interior design book showcasing all of the homes that Ashley Gilbraith has designed. I checked this one out because I'm honestly a sucker at this point in time for a good interior design home cleaning organizing book. It's my current vibe. I I'm absolutely loving watching all of the AD videos. I am loving like browsing through Instagram and looking at the DIY home improvement people stuff. It's just, it's the era for me. It is a self-help interior design era. And the photographs in this book and just like the homes in general are so absolutely beautiful. From what I understand, this woman likes to combine her love for southern hospitality and that kind of southernish vibe with more modern approaches and it just sounds really good i'm honestly just excited to flip through it and maybe just maybe get some inspiration from my own home the sixth book that i currently have checked out and the first of the fiction book checkouts is Valley of the Shadow by Peter Tremaine. This is the sixth book in the Sister Fidelma series and in this one we see Fidelma separated from her abbey and working I think exclusively for her brother who is the king of Cashel. He, she is being sent to this small village, an incredibly isolated village deep in a valley in order to negotiate the building of a church slash school for the community. However, when her and homeboy Adolf, Edolf, whatever his name is, arrive in the valley, they come across 33 murdered men arranged in a very ritualistic and pagan type circle and there is some insanity going on in the valley as well and it is up to Fidelma and brother what's his name to figure out what is going on how it's going down and what is happening obviously I checked this one out because I am low-key obsessed with this series 
and I actually finished this one already. I would give it a pretty solid three out of five stars. It's definitely not my favorite of the series and I figured out who did it and what was going on pretty early on in the story but that didn't detract from the overall storytelling. One of the things that I really really enjoyed about this one in particular is how Fidelma and the druid slash Breton of the small local village tribe situation interact and how their philosophies are almost built upon each other and how Fidelma is able to showcase how Christianity and native religions kind of meshed in a way that allowed for Christianity to be the dominant religion. So I thought it was really good on that regard and that's why I gave it a three out of five stars. If that part had not been in here this would have been a two out of five for me but it was good and I hope to continue on with the series. The seventh book that I currently have checked out is The Lies of the Ajungo by Moses Ose Utomi. This is a fantasy novella set in a world reminiscent to Saharan Africa and follows a young boy named Tutu who is set on an epic quest in order to return water back to his village to save his mother's life. I checked this one out because I saw it on the Lucky Day shelf and that Lucky Day shelf y'all it'd be a dangerous place if you were just kind of mindlessly browsing because everything looks so good and you know you know these are the books that have the incredibly long hold list so I always get a little bit greedy when I get over there but I checked this one out because it looked incredibly interesting the synopsis sounded really good the cover looks really dope and and your girl loves a good fantasy novella. So fingers crossed that I enjoy this one. I'm pretty sure I will, but I am looking forward to just kind of like sinking into this one and like reading it on a pretty chill day. The eighth book that I have checked out is Sorry Bro by Talene Vuscuni. This is a queer rom-com set in San Francisco and follows a Armenian American woman named Nar. Nar has just turned down her boyfriend's incredibly unromantic proposal in front of all of his drunk techie friends and finds herself set into the world of matchmaking by her parents. Nar has not come out to her parents or anyone I believe as bisexual and while she's on all these matchmaking events she catches the eye of this woman named Urubanu I want to say her name is what is homegirl's name Eribuni and Eribuni is incredibly immersed in her Armenian culture and a little bit of witchcraft and together they are finding these matchmaking events to be far more bearable. I checked this one out because it sounds absolutely adorable and as someone who lives in San Francisco I of course feel like I have to read every single thing set in San Francisco and I'm incredibly curious to see what the matchmaking activities are and where they take place throughout the city because it just sounds really good it sounds really promising and I have really 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 high hopes for it the cover y'all the cover is beautiful so I'm looking forward to reading this one. I am hardcore looking forward to reading this one. This one actually might be my next read after I finish the arsenic one. Yeah. The ninth and tenth books that I currently have checked out are The Serpent's Fury by Kelly Armstrong and The Final Trial also by Kelly Armstrong. These are the third and fourth books in the Royal Guide to Monster Slain middle grade series. As I just said this is a middle grade venture fantasy series that centers around these two twins Rise and Rowan who are going on an incredibly epic adventure to prove that one Rowan can indeed become the royal monster slayer and two that Rise can indeed become king and three, that they are worthy of the friendship and the connections and everything they have built along the way. And that is how they are going to keep their kingdom secure. I finished the first two books in this series a little bit earlier this year and I absolutely love them. I had a little bit of that kind of, oh, I don't want this series to end yet feeling, but 
I think it's time for me to finish it. I think it's time for me to knock this series out the park. So I am really, really looking forward to finishing this one. It is an absolutely adorable, low stakes fantasy. And if you are an adult who are, if you're anyone who grew up or read Tamora Pierce's, um, my words today, Tamora Pierce's Wild Magic or Alana series, I would strongly, strongly, strongly recommend giving this series a try if you want to sink into that world just a little bit once again. And the 10th and final item that I have checked out is an ebook via Libby and it is The Last Hours by Minette Walters. This is a historical fiction novel set in England during the 14th century right at the very start of the Black Death. The story follows Lady Anne of Devilish or Derverish and she is an incredibly educated and smart woman which while we tend to think of is uncommon for the time period, there were actually some pretty smart, educated women, so it's no surprise. Anywho, Lady Anne was educated by nuns, so she knows a little bit about the importance of separating one's self from the sick. She ends up closing off her entire manor home and pulling the villagers into the home with her in order to keep them safe. This also means that she has completely and totally alienated her husband, who is off visiting a neighboring village. She's also, Lady Anne, managed to make incredible enemies of her incredibly vain daughter Eleanor and her husband's ex-steward. Will they remain safe as supplies are running low and people are starting to question Lady Anne's decisions and her authority? Let's find out! <laughs> I checked this out because historical fiction is my jam. Um, historical fiction set in England is even further jam and Historical fiction with a little bit of plague in it is a further jam. It is my holy trinity of historical fiction love. So I am incredibly excited to read this one. I came across it as a sleepy Libby browse and for once my sleepy Libby browse has not disappointed me. So I'm really looking forward to finishing this one. It has been my bedtime book so I'm going pretty slow with it. From what I understand, the physical book is about like 400 plus pages, so it's a bit of a chonker. And there's actually a second book. It is part of a series. So I am probably not going to be doing very much more sleepy Libby browsing, but I am. I am looking forward to sleepily reading this one. So those are the 10 books that I checked out over the course of those two weeks. And I saved a grand total of $226.27 by checking all of these books out from my local public library system. And of course, this would not be a currently checked out video without me asking y'all, what do you currently have checked out? And if you don't have anything checked out, you're not a library user, or you just don't feel like sharing that information, let me know how is it that you decide what book you're going to read next when you have a absolute giant pile of books around you. Now I know some folks are mood readers, but what do you do when you're in a mood to read something light and fluffy and you have like 10 light and fluffy books that you can pick from? Like let me know how, how, how y'all pick which books to read. How do you do it? Because right now I feel like I have so many amazing options of books to read that I am just a smidge bidge overwhelmed. And that is it for this video. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. If you enjoyed hearing me babble about books, please give this video a thumbs up. I believe it helps me out with the algorithm. And if you ever want to see and or hear me babble about books ever again, please hit that subscribe button. It really does mean the world to me. I hope everyone is having wonderful days and reading wonderful books and I'll catch you in the next one. Toodles!